Hi everyone, I'm Jerry Shields, your 2K21 golf course superintendent, and welcome to my new series of golf course construction videos for 2K21's golf course designer. Today we are going to talk a little bit about your property and how you need to prepare it before you start plotting and building your golf course. Before I start today's video, I just wanted to thank everybody that's been watching all of my videos over the last year and a bit. We're going to provide some new content, a lot more detail on how people actually really build golf courses in the real world, and how you can use a 2K21 simulator to create that same experience. So stay tuned. This is going to be a long series of design videos. I'm going to try to keep them between half hour, an hour at the max. And uh, as we go along, we're going to see a golf course develop from the raw piece of land that is created by 2K21 uh, in the course designer all the way to a finished product. So as you can imagine, that's a long process. For me, that can take 50 to 100 hours. And I'm going to walk you through all of it so you can see exactly how that works from the viewpoint of someone who's worked in the golf industry, who's been a superintendent, who's talked to golf course architects, and uh, we'll learn a little bit about uh, how all that works. So, so thanks everybody, and let's get down to it. So here we are on the opening screen for 2K21's designer. When you set to create a new course, this is the options you have. Uh, you have course name. You can put it in now if you have one. If you don't, then that's fine because you can always go back and change the course name. So don't get uh, too hung up on that to start. I'm gonna leave today's uh, project as just a new course. And, uh, and then there's some other options, theme, train, layout. And I'm gonna show you how that works. And the best way to use that to simulate the reality of going off somewhere and finding a fresh plot of land and building a golf course on it. Uh, this won't be a video series on using LiDAR. Um, if you're doing that, then that's a different process again, and, and I'll be creating some videos in the future about how to do that again, now that some of the tools and sources of information have changed. But this is that part. Uh, you know, think back to 1930, you got Clifford Roberts and Bobby Jones standing by the big uh, oak tree in front of uh, the, where the clubhouse now stands at Augusta. And uh, as uh, Jones is looking out over the property, you know, he, he says to Roberts to, to think that this land has been here all this time waiting for a golf course to be laid out on it. And that's kind of what we're going to start doing today. We're going to take a look at a piece of property and see some of the features that you want to make sure you have in there and uh, a process that will help you go through from beginning to end of, of developing a golf course. So first thing we are going to touch on is theme. So there are, uh, looks like a total of, uh, what do we have here? Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven 10, 11 different themes. And they do have some different characteristics, obviously. Um, Desert's a lot different than Boreal. But one thing that I'm always asked from people is, uh, what, uh, what theme do I want if I want certain water features? If you don't need a coastline view in your golf course, and if you don't need an island, then several of the courses provide just inland courses, and, and Boreal is one of them. Uh, your next one would be uh, Countryside. It also doesn't have any type of a coastline or, or island option. Uh, same for the Harvest. It doesn't as well. Uh, the Rustic, again, inland. Uh, Swiss is inland, a lot of mountains in the background, but uh, but no water. And the uh, last one is uh, Autumn that uh, does not have a coast. Uh, the one that has the most options when it comes to putting water uh, beside your golf course in a coastline situation is the Highlands, that it has three different coastal views as well as an island option. And there's a couple other island options as well. A step is one of them, which is a little bit odd because step is typically an inland feature on, on several continents around the world, but it does have an island feature. Um, desert as well has an option to create just an island and uh, the last one is uh, sorry there's two more uh, tropical you can create just an island course as you can with the Delta so if you're looking for coastal and water there's a few options out there if you're looking for just inland uh, then uh, you're, you're better off just to uh, go with one of the other ones so for this series of videos we are going to start with the Boreal theme. I kind of like it. It's close to home for me being here in the Great Lakes area of North America. Uh, has some options for water, uh, lots of trees. And, and one thing to consider is if you're looking for a course with uh, lots of trees, then Boreal, Swiss, maybe Delta, Harvest, uh, lots of trees, and uh, the other ones have a little less. But I'm going to show that as an example once we get a little bit farther down. So we've chosen our theme. And uh, what we're going to do next is we are going to go to Layout. 
And from there, what I want to do is I'm going to remove all of the holes. So I really do not want to have any of the holes pre-plotted by the 2K21 course designer. I'm going to do that myself. When I show up on a first piece of property, there's no golf holes there. So I'm going to want to uh, do that from scratch. And so that's uh, the first thing I want to do. So now that I've applied that, I am going to go back and go to uh, the next piece will be terrain. And... Um, I like to have water level fairly high, I like lots of water, so I'm going to leave it at 71. That's fairly high. If you get much less than that, then uh, you can you can really see when you get below uh, 30 and 20 that you would have a, a lot less lakes. If I apply that, for example, see, take a look at that plot there, a lot of the water is going to disappear. There you go. Very little water on the course when you get below 20. Uh, I like having it up a little bit higher. I like a few water features, especially in the, in the Boreal, so I'm going to leave it somewhere around 75. Uh, hills. This is a very interesting one, and, and let's just talk briefly about elevation on golf courses. So with hills, I'm going to go all the way up to 100, and that's because I do want some hills in this golf course. And you're going to think, that seems really extreme. That's the high end of what this uh, software gives us. But the hills um, are not actually very extreme on this um, course designer. In, in fact, when you go to a uh, hundred setting, it is going to give you a difference of about a hundred feet from the water level to the highest hill on your piece of land. And if I apply that, we're back, we see some water, there's some hills, you can kind of see some hint of, of hills in the terrain. So I, I, I leave hills at a hundred. In fact, I may even go and make some of the hills higher. And you may think that's, you know, that's crazy. A hundred feet is a lot of elevation change, but think about it. Uh, from the highest point on Augusta, uh, by I think it's number one green all the way down to Ray's Creek elevation change of 175 feet and I wouldn't consider Augusta to be a very crazy uh, mountainous uh, lot of elevation change but 175 feet on the 10th hole long, alone it's 116 feet from the tee down to the bottom part of the fairway so a lot of elevation change and when you watch Augusta it doesn't give you that feeling that there's a lot of extremes it's a difficult golf course wide open golf course uh, seems reasonable but when you get on it the first time I ever walked Augusta um, I definitely felt the elevation change when you're hiking your way back up 18 for example uh, it is uh, there is a lot of uh, hill climbing there but um, Alistair McKenzie once read that he made a comment about the amount of elevation that's acceptable in the golf course and I, I think he used Augusta's example of you know you want nothing more than you know that 150 feet from the top of the golf course to the bottom if anybody's going to walk it so so just keep that in mind that uh, 100 on the game is not actually really that crazy now of course if you want a, a flatter plot you don't have to worry about that but so I'm going to go for a lot of trees I'm going to go my trees to 100 and again you might think that's a little bit crazy but uh it is really isn't that bad and the reason i'm going to do this is i don't want to have to worry about my my plant meter my the number of objects i put in here which a lot of time is vegetation for me uh, so if i have a lot of native plants and trees already in place i'm going to root my course through those trees and make use of the ones that the game creates and I'm going to have all of my plant meter available for putting extras in that I want to put in. Uh, plants, grass, I leave at 100 along with the trees. And rocks, I take to zero. The game does a very bad, unrealistic uh, way of uh, putting rocks on the property. And they're just kind of these random boulders that are laying around without vegetation on them. And they look kind of out of place. So I, I go rocks to zero. If I want rocks, outcroppings, the such, uh, I will put them in myself. So, And there we go. So that is what Boreal looks, everything maxed out to water level 75 and zero rocks. Uh, you can see what we're, we're into. So um, that's, I think, all we need. We've taken care of the holes. We've got uh, our elevation maxed out, our vegetation maxed out, and we are now good to go uh, all the way down to taking a look at the course. And at that point, I'm going to um, just let this save. And there's our plot. And uh, you can see, if we zoom in, there's nothing too crazy about any of these hills. You know, we've got some undulations here and there. And, uh, you know, if I go to the measure tool, for example, and, and let's just, as an example, let's choose, this is our water level. And right at the water's edge would be the height of where the water starts on this property. And I'm gonna zoom out and I'm gonna move my measure tool around a little bit, uh, just to show you that, uh, there we go. We got about 80 foot climb from that part of the property um, we've got about 40, 50, 60, 70 feet over here, over on this far side, we've got another little hill there that's about 75 feet above water level. Over in this corner, we've got, uh, you know, there's 75 feet. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about, that you really don't have any crazy elevation changes uh, around the property. 
So I just wanted to show one more thing about themes before I move on to actually discussing the, the land we require and, and how to orient things. Um, I'm going to spin this around north to south just because that's just the way I am. But uh, let's go back to themes just for one quick setting here. Let's take a look at how the different themes look with uh, the settings I've got with 100 vegetation and the hills at 100. So, so this is your Boreal. Uh, obviously your desert is going to be pretty clear cut how it looks as well. And just watch how the wild areas look. Um, you can see, you know, that uh, lots of sand, the undulations, uh, where it is kind of steep, has a few rocky outcroppings. And uh, so, so that's how desert would look. We saw Boreal. Uh, we go to tropical and, and just look at the vegetation specifically here. Um, you can see lots of palm trees, a lot of kind of lush green color. Uh, in the background and, and that background color uh, for the areas that you're not going to have maintained turf is pretty critical and, and you want to keep that in mind as to what you want the look to be in the background of your course as you're building it and here we are countryside there's a few trees here and there you can see a little more rough areas of kind of brown turf uh, off in the wild areas and harvest is uh, I don't mind the looks of, of harvest actually uh, a little brilliant, um, almost a little too many reds for me, uh, but uh, th that's another look again. Uh, Delta is very unique. I'm in the middle of building a course right now. I've been working on it for the last few months, and I've used this as my background. It looks very, very interesting. Um, and uh, for some of the courses I've seen in California, this looks kind of what it looks like in the background, even though California isn't really much a, a delta. Um, it, it's a very interesting selection of trees as well, very fine uh, leaf trees, and uh, that, those browns in the background can, can really set off a course from the, the maintain areas that are in between, sorry. And rustic. Rustic is kind of, to me, it's kind of a balance between, you know, countryside and, and boreal. We got lots of trees, mature trees, very green all the way down to the water's edge and uh, and you've also got a little bit of a, a rougher transition uh, into the water you see kind of uh, kind of a pebbly look to that area the interface between grass and water uh, Swiss has by far the most amount of trees but they are all uh, softwood coniferous you can see there that uh, you're entirely uh, filled full of coniferous tree and there are a ton of them so um, I haven't used this yet for building a course, but I do think that I will at some point. I'm just, I've never built a course with mountains in the background. That's the only thing that's kept me from doing it. I love the number of trees. I just uh, have to get my head around how to work the, the mountainous background into it. And we've got step. I use step for uh, rattlesnake gulch uh, because it has kind of a rocky look in the background and, uh, and kind of a desert look in the foreground. And I kind of, to me, it kind of felt kind of New Mexico-like, if, if you would talk about a North America example. Um, and uh, it was, uh, Step is in the real world, is kind of a, the interface between desert and kind of prairie. Uh, in the game, it's more of a desert look. Uh, you typically would have a lot more grass, and, and grasses, widespread grasses in the game is not really the strength of the designer, uh, for sure. And it, it shows in that type of a theme. Autumn, if, if you're kind of curious about harvest and having that fall look, I think autumn is a little more, uh, a better compromise. The colors aren't as drastic and extreme. Um, so, and lots of green in the background. Highlands is one, especially if you're looking at coastal, uh, kind of that Scottish look uh, in Canada here, I'd say it's kind of that Newfoundland look. Uh, as you can see, no trees, a few shrubs, and that's with vegetation at 100. So there isn't a lot there to, to work with. Uh, if you're looking for trees on your golf course, you're going to have to plant them all yourself, is what I'm saying. So so that's how all the different themes look on the same plot of land. And what's really interesting is as you design the course, if it really suits you, you can go in and you can change your theme and, and all the features you build will remain in place. So I'm going to be referencing a book. Um, I actually have it right here with me through this process of over all these videos and it's called Turf Management for Golf Courses by Beard and uh, I'll just flash it on the screen there and I'm going to use this because first of all it's what I grew up with when I started working as a superintendent uh, back before Google and being able to, to become a, a golf course architect uh, you know, enthusiast by just looking stuff up on the internet you had to actually take courses read books and apply your skills and uh, this this book is often referred to as Beard's Bible in the golf industry uh, after Dr. James Beard uh, worked at uh, a university in Texas and he's internationally recognized as an agronomist for turf 
And the first edition that I have right here came out in 1982. There's a new version that came out in 2001. You know, first edition sold 50,000 copies. It's very popular in the golf world. Um, this book was sponsored by the USGA. And the parts that I'm going to talk about today that involve the building and the designing of golf courses were actually written uh, with input from the American Golf Society. Uh, sorry, the American Society of Golf uh, Architects. So, so keep in mind that what I'm about to tell you isn't necessarily just my opinion. It's what I kind of grew up learning and, and observing and working on golf courses. And it's also the opinion of, of what is referred to as you know the Bible of turf management and, and golf course construction. So we're gonna we're gonna apply those principles here. So the first thing that comes out of uh, Beard's book when it talks about construction is the area of land. So that's may seem like kind of an odd thing because we know that 2K21 has given us a piece of land. So let's, what I like to do is I like to, you can see in the background that you really can't see where your land begins and ends. If you're kind of got a really good eye, you can zoom over and you can kind of see a, a little tiny bit of an interface there between the area. Uh, it's not very visible in this, this plot for sure. But what I like to do when I'm trying to figure out where my golf course is going to be is I like to actually mark out my plot of land. And that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and you quickly will realize that our plot of land that 2K21 has given us is about 2,000 yards square. Now that translates into, let me just connect the point here, uh, about 825 acres of property to work with. So you might be wondering, I know I was, uh, you know, Beard's recommendation is that for a golf course with a length of about 6,500 yards and fairway widths about 45 yards, that you can develop a golf course in a 120 acre plot. Now keep in mind, we've got 825. So you could arguably put six or seven golf courses in the area that's provided in the designer. So right off the bat, I would say, don't think you want to lay golf holes that go all around this entire property. Um, you know, why not? I would just simply say that if you want to achieve some sort of realism, you like that look of being able to see a, one hole from another hole, to be able to see the next hole you're coming up to. If you design 18 holes on this entire plot here, you're going to probably end up with, you know, having to plant all around all 18 holes because you're probably not going to see much of any of the holes uh, uh, on the golf course uh, since they'll be so spread out. So what I like to do is I like to find a, a good area to put my golf course in. And as I said, uh, Beard recommended that, you know, 120 acres was your minimum. I think that's a little too small for what I want to do. Uh, I want to have a practice range, a clubhouse, a parking lot, all those different facilities to kind of mimic uh, what a real golf course is. And, and to do that, you're going to need about 200 acres. And so that would be about 850 by 850 yards. You know, usually like rectangular um, plots of land uh, as opposed to square. And the reason being is the orientation with the sun. And, and I'm going to get in trouble here because some people really like to use the sun um, as an artistic tool as opposed to, you know, where it would be in the sky based on where your, your golf course is located. I prefer to, first of all, uh, when I'm doing the design process, I'm going to go to environment here and I'm going to go to weather. And I'm going to set the weather and I'm going to go clear. And the reason I'm going to go clear is I don't want to have to deal with parts of the golf course being cloudy and, and kind of the lighting thrown off. And the other thing I'm going to do is, oh, so go back here, is uh, make sure that I don't have any clouds, which I don't have by clear. And, oh, there we go. Lighting is what I'm looking for. Time of day, I'm going to want noon. And again, I know that some people think that noon lighting is a little harsh. Um, but with the inclination where it's at there at 37, it's a little low for me. I might bump that up to 45. There we go. That's a kind of a nice angle. And that kind of gives me the kind of look I want when I'm designing. And I can see a hint of shadows on, on the hills there. I've got the trees showing shadows uh, from the proper part of the sky. And, and, and by proper part of the sky, what I mean is, let's take a look at the editing feature. See that little compass? I don't know if you noticed that on your little uh, area that you're moving around with the joystick there, it actually has a compass on it. So I want to have my course oriented so I know where north, south, east, and west is. And the way I do that is to go back again to the environment. I go back to lighting. I go to orientation. I'm going to make this a 90 degrees. Oh, eventually. Get close. There we go. That's close enough. And I go back to edit and see how the compass now is perfectly and my plot is aligned east west north south i know that in real life you're going to have plots that are not necessarily that way but a lot of them are property has actually been divided around the world uh especially europe north america based on a north south uh, east west grid so 
So my grid is set up like that. And one thing that's very important is that Beard tells us is that uh, when it comes to a plot, a rectangular is preferred. These are his words are exactly with the longer dimension oriented north and south. So on our course, we want the longer rectangle to be oriented north and south. And he gives us a reason why. And that is because an east-west orientation frequently results in golfers playing into the setting sun on finishing holes, which creates great sight difficulty and discomfort. And if you've been on a golf course playing at the end of the day, it's a real pain to play in with the sun in your eyes. I know the artistic effect is, you know, is good, but for the artistic effect, let's set your, your day of time to get your low sun angle. And in the middle of the day, let's actually have the sun where it would be. And keep in mind, let's orient us, our rectangles should be north to south. So uh, 200 acres is what I've talked about. So I want about 700 by 1,000 yards to give me a, a triangle. Uh, I, I took a look, Augusta National actually has a 275 yards, but it also includes a par three course. So somewhere in that area, of uh, you know just over a thousand by 700 so right off the bat i'm going to take a look and one of the first things that i like to do here is i like to find the highest point of land so i'm going to go back again like we did earlier and i am going to go to the water's edge there we go and i am going to find the highest part of this property i think i saw an 80 and 90 in there let's take a look here yeah, there's a 93. I'm pretty well guessing that that will be the highest point, but let's take a look at a few other spots. There's a nice ridge actually runs across here. There's a 90, 93. And you'll see that even with the tr the hill setting on 100, it'll be really high, hard to find much more than a 90 anywhere. And no, there's 80 over there. So it looks like that is uh, the highest point of land is that uh, 90 that we found. Let's go back over here, see if we can find it again. There's a 91, 92, 93, 94. Can we get it any higher? Let's see here, we can get the peak of that ridge. 98, 99, 100. There we are. So that, that'll be the highest part of our, our property. And I'm gonna click on there. And then what I'm going to do, and, and uh, this might seem a little out of place at this point in the design process, but I just wanna have in my brain where is the highest point of land? And the easy way for me to do is just put some big monstrosity up there that'll start making me think about uh, what's going on. So let's just throw up a building of some sort. No, it doesn't really matter at this point. I'm just going to, eh, that one looks good. I'm gonna throw a house up there. Okay, it doesn't really matter which way I orient it, but I'm starting to think already. Okay, if that is my clubhouse, for example, what view do I want? Well, I'm seeing one right there, right off the bat. There's a beautiful lake over there that plays up, nice long lake. Could play up towards the clubhouse with a finishing hole, maybe a starting hole down near the water. So I'm going to face it in that direction. So see how this kind of works here. You're, you're already starting to get that uh, sense of uh, creativity, the inspiration. So I can get out of here now. I now have my uh, highest point marked by that building. I'm not gonna keep that probably as my clubhouse, but I do know that that's where I want my, my clubhouse to likely be. So now I can zoom back and take a look at my property and there's my highest point of land. There is my clubhouse. And now I'm looking for that north-south orientated triangle, or sorry, triangle rectangle that makes best use of the land. And I, like I said, I like the looks of that lake there. And I said I wanted about, a, you know, let's go about 1,100 by 800 yards. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna measure. Well, this is not too bad over here. Uh, there's a little lake there. I'm gonna see what 800 yards looks like running from, let's try back over here. There we go. And zoom out a little bit. I want this to be oriented north-south, 800 yards. Right about there. So that's my north-south. My line's a little bit off, but the idea is I'm trying to come up with where I'm going to want to put my golf course in this big 800 some odd acres. What I'm going to try to do to come up with. Well, now I need about 1,200. So let me see here. Got some lakes to the top. I got some wide open spaces up here on the edge of the property. Got a little more lakes. I don't want too much water. I need some space for the golf course. I'm going to come down from here at about 
Let's see, we're 1,200 yards. Uh, that's a little much. Let's try again. Let's cut off that lake there and assume we're going to stay inside of this lake. So there we go there. 1,200 yards. Yeah, I like that. That, that looks not too bad. So I've kind of got an idea of my property here that uh, I've got a grid there now I can work with. So if, if I want to draw a rough outline here where I think my golf course is going to be inside of this area, I can quickly do that. I'm just going to undo that. There we go. I'm going to try to get it square to the north-south orientation. There we go, about 800 yards there. And then my... Twelve hundred yards this way, right about there. And I'm gonna go back another eight hundred yards over this way. And you'll see when we do the plotting section of these videos why I am doing this. Is I really don't want to get myself too spread out for my golf course. And I'm just gonna delete couple of these distant markers that I've got and there we go so I've got my clubhouse in place now I have my property in place and I also know that I have a hundred foot elevation change from the water up to there and at this point I am pretty well done with my property if I do anything I may go in and change some hills what I often do here is I try to possibly clean up some of the water oops raise and by that what I mean is I go in here and I find my soft brush make it a little bit bigger and start to create a little bit of managing my property here and I'm gonna just drop this down about four or five feet and what I'm trying to do is I am going to go in and kind of give a little bit of shape to these ponds And the reason I'm doing that is because I know when I when I use these ponds that are inside of where my golf course is going to be, I want some well-defined edges. I don't really want uh, funny little areas that are unmanageable that you can't put a, a tee on or a green on. I'm trying to keep generally the, the rough outline of the pond, but I am at the same time cleaning it up here. This is kind of an interesting area. We can see here that we've got this funny pond with the trees and that little bit of a piece of land that comes out there. I'm going to leave that alone. I think that's kind of an interesting feature. I'm getting to the edge of where my property is that I'll probably use. And if I have ponds that are close to each other, let me just clean this up, then I will often connect them with a little bit of a stream. Because usually ponds aren't all by themselves. And, uh, and if you have that opportunity, you can do that. That's a funny one there. We'll see how we're going to handle that one down the road. Uh, this one, not too bad. I think it's got a nice shape to it. Might kind of widen that little bit of a neck there. And go up and look for any more water. This one here doesn't look too bad. It's kind of interesting. Every plot's different. And uh, this one, there we go. Here's a good example of kind of... I see an opportunity here. We've got some low-lying area here that would likely be really well suited for water. Okay, so we're going to take this down a little bit more. Because as soon as you get, you get into an area like this, uh, and you're trying to put features in, and landscape and maybe add a bunker, you're going to find out real fast that uh, you're going to be running into water. So where we do have water, I want to make sure that that's very well defined. And I'm just going to kind of make a little bit of a more of a open area there. This doesn't look too bad in here. I might kind of push that out a little bit. Going up to here, and this gets to a bigger part of the pond here. We're going to clean that up and add some depth. And I think we're not too bad there. This is actually, most properties I find have some sort of lake here and there that you can kind of connect with a river, but this one has kind of got some really distinct areas for water. So I think this is going to make a really nice course. So, so that is... Uh, my bid on property and if you did have a, a situation where you wanted to change some elevation then obviously that's very doable as well 
uh, say the area where the clubhouse is, you know, you wanted to, the area to be actually higher still. You know? So let's go in here and we can add 30 feet. So now instead of 100 feet elevation, you've now got 130 feet from the top of the property down. And one last thing to consider, and we're going to use this when we plot the golf course out, is you can go in and uh, remove all these trees. So how do you do that? You go back into here. Uh, we go into settings and click on trees and go back to none. And for some people, this is a little easier way to see your plot of land. We can clearly see we've got this big hill, we've got the water, and we've got some interesting features here. So I'm looking forward to developing this piece of land as a golf course. I think it's going to come out really, really well. And uh, when you're looking at now starting to root, you're likely going to try to take advantage of those hills and that terrain. You don't want to have holes that are sharp blind shots uphill. You you want to take advantage of elevation downhill for a lot of your shots. Uh, those areas where you have to climb an elevation, putting those between a tee and a green uh, is often a good way to, to kind of mitigate uh, changes in elevation so the player doesn't have to be playing uphill as much as he is playing downhill. So. So we'll leave it there, throw my trees back in, and I uh, just want to thank everybody uh, for watching this first video. I know it's uh, it's going to be a very detailed run through, as you can see, I've kind of shown you uh, how I take a piece of property, how I create it, how I kind of subdivide it into the area I'm going to put the golf course in. And as we go forward now, I'm going to show you how how my plotting works and how I'm actually going to find holes in here. And, and just as a little bit of a tease, you know, I'm literally going to go down into the weeds and just get the game back so it's cooperating here we go and we're gonna stand out here just like you know um, Bobby Jones and Roberts did uh, and look at it stand on a hill and look across the property and say does that look like a golf hole to you is that a nice green site down across that pond how are we gonna play once we get down to here are we gonna turn and go across here and, and put a, a hole that runs through that gap there and clear out a few trees. We're gonna to try to keep as many trees as we can. We're gonna make use of the elevation. And when you actually build a golf course, that's kind of how it really happens is you go out and you walk the property, you go up and down the hills, look at the water, and you come up with holes that naturally fit in the environment. You don't just clean off the whole plot, wipe out all the trees, start flat and start building terrain. You make use of what you got and that's what we're trying to do here is make it as real as possible. So thank you very much. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. I'll start working on the next video as soon as I can. And uh, the next part will be how do we put holes in this mess of trees, hills, and water. Take care, everybody. And again, I'm Jerry Shields, your 2K21 golf course superintendent. And uh, bye for now.